Are you sheltering in place? Isolated? Feeling alone? <coughs> well, then you're just like us. Hit me. From Studio P in Sausalito, the home of the quarantined hit, it's time for... Suckatash. Suckatash Shut-In, the Soundcast stimulus package featuring snippets from comedy... Soundcasts. And now, here's your host for this episode, Tyson Saner. Insane. Salutón and Felicen Krisnaskon. Estes me, Tyson Saner, your host this week on the final Succotash shut-in episode for 2020. And what an episode it is. Comedian, actress, improvisational performer, soundcaster, and all-around great person, Cassandra Cardenas, joins me for her very first Succotash episode as we talk at length about the Christmas movie classic, question mark, the 2003 Richard Curtis-directed film with the sizable ensemble cast, Love Actually. Last week, Mark Hershon interviewed his fellow Vulture.com soundcast reviewer, Becca James, for episode 233, and you can still listen to it on Google and Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Podbay, iHeartRadio, and the Laughable app, just to name a few places, as well as over at www.succotashshow.com, which is, of course, the show's main website. Cassandra joined me for this conversation immediately after appearing on a weekly soundcast that she has been appearing on for the last five years, Nooner Podcast, over at Kevin Smith's Modcast Internet Radio which you can listen to live just about every Tuesday night at 7.30 Pacific Time. She also has a regular soundcast called Trashy Trashy that she co-hosts with Erica Curry. Trashy Trashy was clipped for Sakatash shut-in in episode 216, Clipping the COVID Blues Away. And both Cassandra and Erica were guests on the most recent episode of Antisocial Show, which was number 89, Fun with Trash, which you can find by Googling sounds by Tyson Saner or by going to www.tysonsaner.com and clicking the link for my SoundCloud. This episode also includes a holiday season-appropriate commercial from our longtime fake sponsor Henderson's Pants, and what could be the final reading from our more recent 100% fake sponsor with the 100% real website, TrumpPoetry.com. We shall see what the next year brings. As I mentioned earlier, Cassandra joined me right after getting done with Nooner Podcast, after a small break that we both needed, but not a very long one, taking our personal time constraints we previously agreed on into account, which is a very formal way of saying that we both had ticking clocks and potentially dwindling capacities to contend with. One quick note. This particular episode of Nooner that had just finished featured the return of original host Dan Etheridge, who, along with Marty Yu, began creating podcast episodes together almost ten years ago. The episode is number 259, and its title is, What Else Is Gonna People Do? You did not mishear that. Now, without further delay. Okay, so welcome to uh, to Succotash, the comedy soundcast soundcast, which is now called Succotash Shut-In, to reflect the um, state that we are all, uh, many of us are in. Those of us who don't wish to catch COVID tend to have been spending more time at home. Mm -hmm. And... um, so, because it's the Christmas season, and because I've recently seen a movie that has to do with the Christmas season, and because oh, this movie right. was re- recommended by you, actually, uh, for a very long time, or at least you, you recommend it every year on, on Nooner Podcast, a soundcast that you are, uh, you've been on for five, six years now, it seems like. Five years, I think. That sounds about right. So you've been on at yeah. least half the time the show has been a thing now, mm-hmm. which is pretty cool. I guess. Oh, well, I mean, it's, you know, it's, yeah, yeah, no, it's, it's like, well, you know, I mean, podcast. I'm can... coming from Nooner, so I have my uh, normal Nooner attitude. After Dan left, we got back to being really nice and mean to each other, so. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but the funny thing is, is I, I mean, there's not a group that I would, uh, there's not another group of people that I would listen to be mean to each other, uh, <laughs> uh, because I know that you guys are not actually hating on each other. It's just very funny to that. And, uh, you know, and you're all, I assume good people. So that's, uh, you know, yes. that's how that works. Except Kroger. He's the worst person I've ever met. <laughs> well, <laughs> Well, the funny thing about it, so that's Stephen Kruger that you're mentioning. Uh, he actually uh, became the um, final, I, I was going to say the impetus, or but it's more like the final nail in the coffin of me not having seen this movie, Love Actually, that we're going to uh, discuss a little yes. bit. Be- yes, yes. Because I've been re- re- recommending this Bollywood movie for about oh, uh, for about a year and a half now, and it's kind of, you know, at the beginning it was 
when I thought it was more likely you know, anybody would see it, it was, uh, you know, it was more of a real suggestion. And then as time wore on, I was like, well, I've been mentioning it every show. I got to get one Thugs and Stand reference in at least, you know, and now I don't even care. <laughs> But then Steve It's Mal- too long. You know how I feel about movies that are over an hour and a half. I don't fucking want to deal with it. Can I cuss on this one? Yeah, it's fine. Great. Yeah. You know, you don't have to watch it all in one go. I, but what the fuck? <laughs> last, the last movie I did that with was The Irishman. And guess what? I didn't fucking like The Irishman. I didn't see The Irishman. So, yeah, it's super fucking long. That's probably why you didn't watch it. Well, it's on Netflix. That's why I didn't watch it. Me who watches long movies. You ever seen that? I don't know why you didn't watch it. It was a Scorsese movie and it was nominated for a bunch of Oscars. It's the only reason I watched it. And I watched it in shifts and I said, yeah, fuck this. Sorry. Like make a TV series or make a shorter fucking movie. But I, I'm not coming for you like that. I know that you love this movie. I know you love Thugs of Hindustan. I'm just... It's too long for me. That's funny. I mean, it's fine. It's 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 really. I'm really happy that uh, uh, one of you has seen it. And but specifically, yes. actually, I'm so happy that Kruger saw it because uh, you know he dislikes a lot of movies. You know, and he's also he had dislikes s- a lot of things. A lot of things, and he has also had some recommendations over the years that I have seen and enjoyed. For example, I think he the Behind the Candelabra, I believe it's called. Sure. Certain, yes. His enthusiasm for that film. Was like okay, well, I I should probably at least see it to see what the you know see if it's any good. And I did enjoy it, and I and I got other people to watch it after that. That's what's good about people who don't like things is that when they do like things, they like things the most. Hmm. Um, and I've noticed that about when he doles out recommendations, he talks about things as if it's possibly one of the best things he's ever seen. So the fact that he liked your Thugs of Hindustan. Yeah, it makes it it's it it adds you know credit to uh, your uh, your campaign to get us to watch this. But I'm I'm telling you, Tyson, this is too fucking long of a movie. <laughs> it's a bridge too far. As a which, by the way, there's a long film, and I have seen that. Um, How long is that one? I do not know, but I believe it's at least two and a half hours. Oh, actually, Ugh. one moment. Uh, okay, Google. How long is the movie A Bridge Too Far? A Bridge Too Far's running time is two hours and 56 minutes. Ugh! See? Yeah, it's two hours and 56 minutes. But, you know, I've seen, I've also seen Cleopatra, the Richard Burton, Elizabeth Taylor, at least twice. And that movie is, I think, about four hours long. So you just did something that uh, reminds me of my brother, who bugs me a lot. Um, <laughs> and he... <laughs> Who doesn't have a sibling that doesn't bug them? Mm. So he just always, like, we'd be chit-chatting. He'd be like, okay, Google. And then, like, do his whole, like, thing. And uh, I am, uh, of course, uh, I submit to my Apple gods. Mm. So uh, my person is Siri. And then I also have an Alexa. Mm -hmm. And for some reason... Because it was my brother, I was like, okay, Google. Even though I'm literally like, hey, Siri. Or I'm like, Alexa. Like, oh, shit, I said it, and my, every single thing in my house went off. Yeah, it's because of the, the thing. But, yeah, no, Siri, I also, yeah, you're friendlier with Alexa because uh, she's your friend. Yeah, so I, I, I the point was is that the okay Google is very, like, ugh. Stupid, my brother. Yeah, I'm sorry. It's just it's a nice, it's a novelty to be able to just kind of like have a question like that and not have to go, which is what normally. I'm telling you, no, they're great. I mean, I I used my Siri earlier to ask her something about. Oh, actually, it's him. I have a British male voice for my Siri, but cool. I asked him something. I asked if uh, sugar snap peas were safe for dogs. The answer, yes. Oh, good. It's good to know. Oh, and, and by I mean just making that noise. And it takes forever to find stuff. No, totally. You keep doing that until someone asks, what do you need? <laughs> and you're like, what? And then you ask them the question. I'm threatening to tickle the invisible man. That's what's happening. That's how Ask Jeeves became a thing. Threatening to tickle the invisible man? Yes. Ah. Jeeves? Mm-hmm. See, he doesn't hear me. Also, one of the other reasons I do this is because, um, do you remember a podcast that was called uh, Skull Juice that lasted for a little bit? 
Um, of course not. It was Dino Stamatopoulos and Andy Dick. And I, no. I, I uh, actually made a song sampling stuff from it. But um, it's since gone on to become Dino and Dana's Safe Space. And that is uh, Dino Stamatopoulos with Dana Snyder, uh, the voice of Master Shake, and other cartoon voices. And why did they bring it up? Oh, it's because they had a running gag for a bit there where uh, they'd, they'd pretend to ask Google a question, but they'd say, hey, Googie, and there's apparently this character, maybe an <laughs> old-time radio, who, who would have this voice kind of like, Yes, and then, so it'd be like, uh, "Hey, Googie." Yes, dum dums. So he, they'd say that a lot, and that was kind of like a running gag for like many, many shows. And it's since gone by the wayside. But like, I, I was listening to it in the past, like two years ago. No, sorry, I was listening to two-year-old shows, I should say. And I have this now, so I can literally now just say, except if I say, "Hey, Google." Okay, it does work, but normally the prompt is okay. Well, anyway, all this is. Fascinating. Well, would you like me to check? Oh, what? Oh, um, how long is the film Love Actually? The running time of Love Actually is two hours and 25 minutes. Huh. How wow, long? really? Yeah. Uh, uh, well, that makes sense, though. Uh, okay, Google. How long is the run time of Thugs of Hindustan? Thugs of Hindustan's running time is two hours and 45 minutes. It's 20 more minutes. It's, it's, uh, so, yeah. <laughs> oh, no. Take me out of this. And there are songs. So, but anyway, yeah, it's it's. I, I hate to keep. I mean, I honestly, I do hate to keep bringing it up because it is. It is. Uh, I have. I really. I haven't seen it in a while. So, and uh, it's it, a running joke at this point. It is, but it is so good though. It was, I do need mm-hmm. to. I mean, I did have it on. A, I had its soundtrack, all three of its main songs, on a CD that would, I would listen to in the car uh, on the way over to work, and that's uh, so, and my little kid boy has heard. Those three songs many, many times. <laughs> Surya Ya, Vashamale, and uh, Manzuri Huda. Great stuff. Anyway, so Love Actually. When, <laughs> when did you discover, and then subsequently, I assume, perhaps at a later time, if not right away, uh, enjoy the movie Love Actually? Well, let's see. Um, it came out in 2000. Two, uh, two thousand three. One fingers, of those two. My fingers. Uh, yeah, just, you're, they're disappearing into your background. Uh, yeah, it came out in two thousand three. Mm-hmm. Um, I probably didn't watch it. Well, I might have watched it then. Who knows? It was thirteen. Mm-hmm. Um, preteen. Who knows? Um, I don't know when it became such an active thing for me. I think that I was kind of aware. Because it, it's like Love Actually and The Holiday I watch every year, no uh, matter what. The Holiday? Uh, the Holiday, which with uh, Cameron Diaz, Jude Law, Kate Winslet, and Jack Black. Wow. It's another, yeah, it's another Christmas movie. Um, that came out, <laughs> yeah, I agree. That came out around the same time. And uh, they are two of the quintessential kind of like, are these bad? They're bad movies, right? But also, like, oh no, they're pretty fucking watchable. And so, I don't like. I I just know, like, and I started to get older, and then, and I just knew that I loved these movies. And then I started to like, you know, do improv and stuff when I was like nineteen twenty, nineteen dash twenty, not nine, not in nineteen twenty, mm-hmm. uh, and um, I uh started to find more people that liked it. And I was like, okay, I'm not alone here. Mm -hmm. And it's just been a Christmas tradition of mine. Um, And then, you know, things like love actually live happen. And then I'm like, yeah, you guys, I'm not the only fucking person who likes this super problematic movie. (laughs) It is a bit problematic in spots. Well, and what's, isn't it interesting how like, I mean, my if I had seen this in 2003, which, by the way, it came out, I believe, in December 6th of 2003 in the theater. Right. Uh, I, 2003, I was uh, I got married like 10 days later, like I said, mm. which, by the way, is the 16th of December, which is tomorrow. And so tomorrow is my 17 years married. Cute. Yeah. And for our after wedding celebration, we actually went to the premiere of uh, Return of the King because we big nerds. So. Okay. 
Uh, so that was fun. We enjoyed the hell out of that. Oh, actually, now that, <laughs> now that I think about it, the film broke in that screening, so we got our tickets refunded and went back to see it the next week. But we did get to watch half of Return of the King on our wedding night. Yes, I guess that would be technically the wedding night. At the Wowie! Industry. It's pretty fun. Okay. Uh, yeah, you know, it's like, I'll take your word That's for cool. it. That's <laughs> cool. So, you pro- have you seen any of the Lord of the Rings movies? I have seen. I've seen all of them. Oh, okay. Um, oh, Martin Freeman is in love, actually. He sure is. Um, yeah, my uh, my brother, Captain OK Google, um, he was super into the Lord of the Rings movies and would make us watch them mm-hmm. on Christmas. Um, so, I've seen the Lord of the Rings movies multiple times. Yes, uh, we used to uh, listen to the commentaries to fall asleep. As I, I like commentaries, mm-hmm. so like um, uh, Christopher commentaries Lee. are so much fun. I miss that element to DVD watching. Oh yeah, uh, like I I think streaming is so much better and so much more convenient and cheaper ultimately. But I do miss commentaries. There's a uh, a great commentary of Arnold Schwarzenegger and um, he's doing commentary on uh, Conan the Barbarian, I think. Oh, wow. And it's like a, it's like a YouTube thing and it's super funny. Cause it's just like, listen to Arnold Schwarzenegger, watch this movie for sure for the first time. And it just so happens to be his favorite movie. Oh, that's funny. Like he, all of his reactions are very like genuine and like kind of shitty and, but also like very excited. And then the director's like trying desperately to keep it on track. And I'm like, Oh, I miss, I miss commentary so much. Which movie was it that, uh, it sounds, that uh, sounds amazing. I think it's Conan the Barbarian. It's Conan um, the Barbarian. Oh, but he's like, he'd never really seen it. Okay. Well, like he was definitely in it, but yeah. like, it was just, like, he was reacting like, someone who'd never seen the movie and also just won't shut the fuck up during the movie. I can see uh, that could happen. Yeah, it's <laughs> it's very, like, it, it's very funny. <laughs> I will I'll have to make a point to, to watch that now, because I do like a good I'll comment. find the YouTube video and I'll send it to you. Um, so, in tw- so in 2003, when it came out, um, I... It's interesting how stuff like that now reads as problematic. Uh, when it seemed to be more kind of like, in, at least in films, acceptable behavior. <laughs> to, Are you talking about in Love Actually? Yes, specifically in Love Actually. There's there's many things in it where you, you, where it's like, oh, well, that's that would be very, you know. There's all these like, um, well, it's okay well, we, if we do we, spoilers. Uh, but you know, we, and we can break down each storyline one by one if you'd like. I'm. Completely prepared. Oh boy, gosh, you know, there's only so much time. <laughs> um, no, I mean, but no, I would, okay. I would, I would love to. No, how, let's probably like, like rating, like what, what? Let's talk about which ones are the most problematic, and we can, we can kind of rate them like top three. There's the Alan Rickman's assistant who is like very actively trying to break up his marriage, and that's problematic. Yes. Yes, yes, we it have, is. Yes, but, yeah, go ahead. Mm-hmm. We have, um, the other one that's really fucked up is a uh, guy from Walking Dead who's oh. in love with Keira Knightley who just married this guy's best friend. Yeah, Chiwetel Ejiofor's, um, uh, I can't remember his character name. <laughs> yeah. I can't either. He's not, the, he's not the main part of that love story, which is crazy. No. So that's problematic. There's also... <laughs> Oh, poor man's Matthew Lillard. Um, say again. Who goes? Poor the man's poor Matthew, man's Lillard. <laughs> Matthew Lillard. <laughs> yeah, I don't remember his name, but I know what you're talking about. Who, Colin, who goes to? Uh, I mean, is that not the best description of him? It really is. It's like him and Rupert Grint made it, this this character. Yeah. I my one of my favorite things to do when I'm watching like British television or British movies yeah. is like their actors look like just like our actors, but just a little bit off. And so it's, it's very fun to just like figure out who they are, but just like different. Um, so anyways, poor man's Matthew Lillard goes to America mm-hmm. and has sex with um, some actress who I've never seen ever again, January Jones, mm-hmm. uh, Elisha Cuthbert yes. and Shannon Elizabeth. Yeah. Yeah. Amazing. And then Heather. No, sorry. Excuse me. Ooh, who is it? It's not Brooke Shields. It's not, 
It's uh, uh Heather Locklear? No. 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 What the fuck is it? Certainly not Heather Locklear. Heather Graham. It's Heather Graham. Is it Heather Graham? Yes. What's the name of that guy? Oh, it's Colin Tony and the American Girls. Okay, so Eliza Cuthbert. Yes. Ding, 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 ding. January yes. Jones. So yes. Stacy is Ivana Mil- Milicevic, I think is the way that's I think pronounced. it's a monkey model, I guess. Who knows? Shannon Elizabeth, of course, is the... Oh, yes. Shannon Elizabeth. My goodness. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so this is this is the other thing about that, um, the movie is that they're... Now... I'm saying all this from a place of love. I did very much like this movie when I did finally see it. I, there were several moments in it where I had emotional reactions to it, but I have emotional Good. reactions to movies all the time. I mean, that's, you know, it just, it makes me feel better when Don't it's Don't downplay it. Hmm? Well, Don't no. downplay it. Well, I would say more so in rom-coms, um, yeah. generally speaking. Like, I will have unexpected unemotional moments in movies. Or, uh, unemotional? Yeah, I'll have uh, emotional moments in movies, and I was like, well, where did that come from? But, like, with a movie like Love Actually, it's very obvious where things come from, because it's usually about relationships or things going wrong. Well, that's another story. but it's all, it's Not another story, but I'll, I'll get to that later. So, like, the thing with the three girls is that, tonally, this movie moves around a bit like it's very mm-hmm. serious in spots it's got some very funny things and by the way all the things i'm saying i'm sure people who've never seen it and i've also just seen a lot of movies are like yeah that's like every movie has like funny spots and no no you don't understand this movie you quit downplaying love actually this movie doesn't know <laughs> exactly the, the, the problem is is that there is i think the problem is that, that there is a there is a, a subplot that was trimmed down significantly so it tended to make elements of the movie that seem to have kind of a magical reality to them stand mm-hmm. out because there's like, so by the time it gets to the girls and the guy and the guy in the room, I'm like, okay, this is a dream or he's going to wake up and they've robbed him. And it's like, Oh no, they're just going to make this a reality in this, in this movie. So this guy's life. He just, just said, went this I, way. he said, British girls are too stuck up and I just have to go to America. And he goes to one random Minnesota bar and ends up fucking four girls in one night. I mean, look, <laughs> it's a Christmas movie, and oh, hold on, I'm getting a phone call. Stop. That's fine. That's fine. All right, I'm not going to answer. Are you crazy? Twas the night before Christmas, when all through the house, not a garment was stirring, not even a blouse. The shirts were hung by the jackets with care, in hopes that some pants soon would hang there. The boxes were nestled all snug in their drawers, while socks, athletic and tubular, had been left on the floor. And Mama in her kerchief, and I in my cap, were worn out from discussing our marital gap. From the hangers in the closet, there arose such a clatter. I yanked open the door to see what was the matter. I pulled skirts and blazers aside like a flash, yanked down all my ties, my belts, and a sash. Though the weak light in that cupboard could barely show the inside of the place where all our clothes go, yet what to my wondering eyes should appear? A dozen new pads to cover my rear. Being hung like a sailor, I'm sorry, being hung by a tailor so lively and quick, I knew in a moment it must be Saint Nick. More rapid than eagles, his hands they did fold, those pants on wooden hangers so old. He said, oh, now here are some pants they designed for Nixon, and two pairs of trousers custom made for Wolf Blitzer. Check out that zipper, make fast the clasp, for soon pants from Henderson's will save your sweet ass. (laughs) You've heard of their dungarees, pet pants, and khakis, their Wake Island shorts were proclaimed to be tacky. Won't you please try on a pair of Henderson's best? Perhaps some turtleneck trousers with a vest? Or ballet pants? Clam diggers? Space pants for sure? Why not their drifter chinos? Picnic pants and more? There are plenty of Henderson's pants to go round. Great pantaloons at a bargain are yours to be found. 
That jolly old fellow, he saw I was a skeptic and realized that the hard sell at Christmas made me quite dyspeptic. So he mellowed a bit and gave me a smile and suggested we just kick back for a while. I asked him point blank, do you have time to waste? You've only got one night to be all over the place. He laughed and said not to worry. Thanks to a secret, he was in no hurry. He showed me from the sides of the trousers their sprouted wings, with pockets so deep he could carry all of his things. A sail spiel on Christmas? Are you joking? You can't! He winked and he said, Brand new from Henderson's. They're the new Santa Pants. Originally made for sneak thieves, elves, and guys who sit on thrones in the middle of department stores right after Thanksgiving, Henderson's original Santa pants are available at the North Pole. And that's it. Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year from Henderson's, makers of nice knitwear and naughty naga hide since 1829. And now back, ho, 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 to Succotash. Okay, so this should be said because it's relevant to what you're saying. I think. For the three problematic stories, mm-hmm. we've got three nice ones. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Okay. We mm-hmm. have. I think Martin Freeman's little story is nice. Oh, yeah. It's okay. I like that one. They play little stand ins and they have to do a lot of like simulated sex, but they're just having conversation. They're just getting along. I have a problem with the fact that they get engaged after a month, but that it's fucking fine. After a month? Um, yeah, because it goes one month later. It, it, the last scene of the movie is one month later, mm-hmm. and everyone's at the airport again, you know, because that's yeah, where it starts yeah. in the airport. Right, right. And, you know, like, they're like, oh, my God, what are you guys doing here? Like, oh, we're waiting for a friend. And then, like, the blonde girl's like, me, and, like, holds up her hand. And they're like, oh, my God, yay. And I'm like, what? One month? That's crazy. Anyways. Wow. How long have they been working together? <sighs> it, the whole movie takes place the three weeks before Christmas. So that's... Less than two months. So did they only just meet on the shoot? Yes. So they must have really had a good rapport during that that, uh, whole time they were shooting in order to decide, well, you know what, this is pretty much it for me. I smell Romeo and Juliet shit, and I don't like it. But uh, let's ignoring that part. Their storyline is good. Um, I think Colin Firth's storyline with the uh, Portuguese. Portuguese girl is good. Mostly. Mostly good. I... What's bad about it? Uh, she's his employee. But she loves him too. Of course she does. I know, but see, this is my and point. And he doesn't make any moves on her no, he until doesn't. last minute, and it's it's delightful. Mm-hmm. And then the third, this one, I guess, if you have your employee, uh, no, okay, fine, I, I won't even include it. Uh, oh come on, it's okay. Leo, no, 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 I, I forget it. That's the seventh story, and that one is, I guess, the one that we can really debate. But the, the other one that's good is Liam Neeson's stepson. Oh, yeah. Off to perform later as an adult in Queen's Gambit. Mm-hmm. But, like, that kid um, and Same his story. little... He learns how to play drums for Joanna, who is a good singer from America. That's a, those those are the three nice ones, and then the seventh, which is the outlier, which is up for debate, is Hugh Grant, uh, who falls in love with his employee. Um, uh, what's her name? Fuck! I just watched this movie. Character or the um, actress? No, the the character. Who I don't care about the actress. Okay, character is it's David and I Natalie. Know. Natalie. They've got it broken down on Wikipedia, so I all the subplots, and so that's nice. I think I got all seven of them. Oh, uh, I think so. Um, oh well, yeah. Okay, so going through it, and uh, yes, actually, the the, the Liam Neeson uh, Sangster storyline is probably one of my favorite ones. Although, yeah, it's really sweet. Well, yeah. So it's it's so one of my triggers uh, I revealed was in this in the the conversations with him where the kid is you know he's in love and whatnot. Now he's just lost his mother. You know, yes. Which is like oh my god! I mean the whole funeral thing that was you know I was like okay it's pretty sad but I'm not quite there yet you know and then um, and then he has a conversation on the bench about you know 
oh, you know, that, but he feels like he realizes he's in love, and so he's like, oh, that's great, or something. I don't remember it verbatim. I've seen the movie once. And then he's like, no, it's agony. You know, and, mm-hmm. you know, and then Neelian Neeson is like, oh, yeah. Yeah, it is. He goes, yeah, is it, um, agony well, I, you're in love. That's not so bad. Is there any, like, yeah, is there any more agony than being in love? Oh, no, you're right. And there's really not. There's Mm-mm. really not. And that's, that, that hit me. Being in love is so fucked up because it's the best thing and also, like, the biggest trouble you're ever going to get into. <laughs> uh-huh. Yep, it's it's the it's the ultimate reality. It's not just being in love, by the way. It's also having love mm-hmm. and loving other people, loving friends, loving family members. You know, I guess technically, I that's every other people. <laughs> but love yeah. actually is all around. It is all around. Love is all around. Oh, okay, actually, you know, yeah, that's, the eighth, that's the eighth storyline. Is yes, that yes. guy, and his manager. Billy Mack. And his manager, his his manager, he body shames throughout the. <laughs> I know. Okay, so. By the way, lots of body shaming in this movie. <laughs> oh my god! Yes. So 2003, and especially 2003 in London, mm-hmm. things were loose on how we were talking about people's bodies. There is, like, trigger warning. There's a lot of like chubby and fat jokes in this, and uh, mm-hmm. it's a thing. But uh, I have a feeling most chubby and identifying as fat people uh, are probably used to it and uh, watch something from 2003 and go, yeah, whatever. Mm. But if you want something that doesn't bring up weight at all, perhaps enjoy The Holiday. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Kate Winslet, Jack Black, Jude Law, and Cameron Diaz. That sounds good. Where Jack Black gets to be a romantic lead. So again, I did really enjoy this movie. Good. Um, I wonder... Uh, have you seen the um, Honest Trailers uh, version? Uh, yes, Hal. Oh, not of Love Actually, but uh, Honest Trailers done by Hal Rudnick, I believe, is one of the guys who does it. Oh, he's, oh yeah, Hal Rudnick. He, he, I followed him on Twitter. He was part of the UCB. He was in Hal Rudnick, who was one as a teacher of mine for a long time, and. Really? Uh, yeah, and a, and a friend, and he's great, and we love Hal Redneck. He was in Freak Dance. I yes, guess. he was. He in Freak Dance. You're right. Freak Dance, which, by the way, one of the best opening uh, dance numbers in any movie. Um, Not everybody's in Freak Dance. Everybody at UCB at that time was in Freak Dance, yeah. except me, student. Oh. Uh, Boo. Well, you know, maybe there'll be a Freak Dance too. Eh. Electric boogaloo. Sure. Um, yeah, so I haven't seen the Honest Trailers of Love, actually, but I would love to. <laughs> well, I will send you the link. Oh, oh, the other storylines so with Billy Mack and whatnot. There was another one's Laura Linney and then the guy from 300. Oh, fuck. God, Is that what he sad. was in? He's in a lot of things. Yes. He's also oh in Westworld. Oh, my God. He was Xerxes, yeah. He, he's in okay, lots of stuff. Guys, not <laughs> fucking storylines. I totally forgot about Laura Linney's. Oh, my God. That one was so shitty. Very sad, yeah. That one was frustrating, but it's also like, damn, like, give it to the people of actually, like, that's some real shit. Oh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. This is, see, this is another reason why I, I, I vote on the, I, I like this movie side, is because there's a lot of, even though it has this magical reality, occasionally, and, and it has a lot of harsh reality and unvarnished reality. Mm-hmm. And that's, it's, and that's why it's totally uneven, but it doesn't make it a bad movie. And, you know, and so I don't, I don't count it in the bad movie column because of I mean, like this. what is uneven? If uh, uneven, you've got if you've got two scales and it's over here and it's over here, wouldn't you call that balanced? I, I yeah, okay. <laughs> I say that as a person who has gotten many notes on many scripts of saying, "Hey, everything was great except this one scene where you kind of left Earth." What was up with that? <laughs> left Earth. Oh, so, is that a metaphor? But I, I uh, it just. I, I, I all write things that are um, suddenly kind of uh, not real, Ima- imaginative, as you say. But I take a lot of uh, writing inspiration from Tina Fey, where sometimes, you know, like the jokes and things kind of leave the realm of actual real life possibility. I think that's very funny and it's absurd. Okay. Um, and I think that love actually does that in its own way, I guess. Could well, I? not really. I mean, nothing, nothing like extraterrestrial or like fake happens. It's just, you know, it's just kind of loose with what 
could be real. Well, did you know that um, Bean, Mr. Bean, uh, uh, Rowan Atkinson's character mm-hmm. was uh, actually supposed to be kind of like a Christmas angel? Yeah, well, and he was in one storyline. So if you think about the two times that he really uh, interacted with the other storylines, um, there is the wrapping the necklace scene, mm-hmm. and then there's the I helped this kid out at the airport at the end scene. Yes. And nothing in between. <laughs> no connective tissue. Just now he's... Here was there this, more? He's doing this funny... Yeah, it was supposed to make it like really obvious oh, that wow. he was like some kind of a supernatural influence, uh, but it's now it's like, what's this little nod he does to this kid? He doesn't have... The, there's no... Really, he's just he just suddenly appears and he's like everything's good. Like he's been there watching the whole time. Like he literally comes out of nowhere for that scene, that last scene. But the scene where he's wrapping uh, the gift, putting that in context, it actually makes it more like oh, he's giving Alan Rickman's character time to figure out if he really wants to do what he's attempting to do here. And it's funny, but it's like if they had left in more of that stuff, I think the context of Rickman's like kind of impatient. Well, he ends up been... doing it. That's the thing, is he it? Does. Like he ends up. So it's kind of like mm. it, it. It kind of lands as just being a comedic scene where he like he didn't do it then, but he did it another time. Which is like, oh man, really? Yeah. I mean, and by the way, yeah, I don't know. It was. I do agree with Emma Thompson's uh, like uh, uh, characters. Um, she's so good. Oh, she's always good. Uh, her summation in the that it's more hurtful. The way, what you know, then, then having, yeah, if you were me, what would you do? Yeah, and by the way, we never really, you know, get like a what happens now because there's just that the returner's like, well, you can see the relationship's still a little strained, but who knows? It might, might be fine. They have roots, they have kids, they're both adults. Time, that's it. Time, time is a thing. Time really changes things. Oh, so please, time actually, time actually, did you get that link I sent you? Because I'll go ahead and cut it out of the thing because I can't uh, put. I mean, but I will. I put in a little thing where I said, and then Cassandra yeah. watched the screen, blah blah blah, whatever it's called. I can't remember. It's hilarious. Oh, I see it there. Okay, should I watch it right now? Please. All right, hold on. I'm watching this right now. Oh, there we go. Oh, should. Ooh. And then Cassandra watched the Honest Trailers interpretation of Love Actually, which is on the Screen Junkies YouTube channel of the same name. You could totally pause this, watch that, and come back to this for context if you click the link that you can't see because you're listening. And I recommend that you do. In the meantime... This episode of Suckatash is sponsored in part by TrumpPoetry.com, a chronological ode to a fake muse. Enjoy a rhyming spin on the news of the day every day, as well as over 500 archived daily verses thoroughly covering the White House, America, and the world with a sticky caramel coating that's impossible to remove. That's TRUMPoetry.com. Everything you need to know in rhyming couplets. Trump Poetry. Yes, TrumpPoetry.com. So, this could be the final reading. We'll see. We shall see. I've selected two, a short one and a slightly longer one. First one is from the 19th. It's called Saturday Rhyme. It's uh, 32 days left until inauguration. The election, he still is disputing. Democrat fraud, you're darn tootin'. Corruption, deceit, but still not a tweet on hackings by his buddy Putin. And then the second one is from the 20th, with 31 days to go. 31. A month to play the waiting game. And what more will he break before he leaves? Each minute now another loved one grieves. His actions and inactions soak up blame. And without pardons, guess whose heads may roll? Because of Donald's campaign money laundry. Now Lara, Kim, and Jared in a quandary with other family members on the payroll. King Lear in winter calls upon the loyal, a craving yet ever-dwindling lot. They clutch at fading options as they rot, to keep the sad rain of this festered boil. With no concession, ever crying foul, he ponders special counsel Sidney Powell. Right? Right. We now return you to Cassandra Cardenas watching the Honest Trailers episode Love Actually from Screen Junkies, already in progress. Oh my god, (laughs) that's... Amazing. That's so perfect. See now, I didn't, I didn't actually hear any of that. So what? Uh, I mean, but I had seen it before. What? Uh, what did you like about that? <laughs> uh, <laughs> I mean, I feel a little called out. <laughs> oh. 
but also seen. And it's true. I mean, look, if I understood why me and other women like this movie, I, I would tell you, but, um, it, it, it really does sum it up of like a movie that's like a, it's supposed to be a love movie, but it's actually super fucking sad. Mm. Um, so a Christmas movie. Uh, <laughs> buying a necklace, buying a necklace for a walking vagina. Walking vagina, yeah. That was one of my favorite ones. Uh, <laughs> um, then them going through the cast of like who they like, they like them better in other things. <laughs> oh, it was just, it, um, then breaking down all the creepy stories of like, yeah, because the kid, the kid from Queen's Gambit and Game of Thrones and all this shit, like, yeah, the girl he's in love with has the same name as the dead mom. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, well, when you put it that way, but I'll tell you, it works. They, it just, you know, it, as a movie, it works. <laughs> you know, if you, like people. That's the thing. Is it like there's every once in a while, there's just things that exist that no one can explain that everyone fucking likes, and love actually is one of those things. I agree. It's like eggnog. Eggnog is disgusting, but like people fucking like it. I like pumpkin spice eggnog. Whatever it is. I also like pumpkin spice Cheerios. Eggnog is love actually. (laughs) Eggnog is love actually. Okay. So I went and saw Love Actually live last year. A friend of mine uh, took me, which is great. Uh Um, And Love Actually live is a a sequence or a combination of like live. Like, they're just playing the movie. Mm-hmm. And then also, actors come on stage. David Hasselhoff's daughter was in it. Um, mm. And they're, like, they're acting out some of the scenes from the movie, but then also injecting original songs, which is fucking insane. Original songs. And wow. Yes, like songs that just, I guess, fit the love, actually. I don't know. It's a fucking disaster, and it's so. Again, I have to emphasize: I'm aware that this isn't a good movie, yeah. but like, this is—I don't know—it just works, and, and and so then this Love Actually Live, it just fucking worked. It was so much fun to just watch this craziness unfold, and so outside of love actually live they have like you know like a photo booth esque thing set up because everyone needs it for the instagram yeah. and what do they have there but they have the to me you are perfect sign and nice. because it's so symbolic of love actually even though it's one of the like craziest plot lines if yeah. you want to like identify along with like a good plot line that makes sense like let's talk about Colin Firth telling his that girl in Portuguese that he wants to marry her, but instead we're focusing on Rick Grimes uh, trying to tell his best friend's wife on Christmas, "I love you." Yeah, rather than yeah, yeah, yeah. It's um, I think I relate to Unrequited Love from the past. It's one of the reasons why I started off the uh, this earlier thought with. Uh, Focusing on when the movie came out, and then came out the year I was, I got married, because mm-hmm. I'm pretty sure that before this movie came out, I was, I was a more toxic person who has since, oh yeah, who has since. Uh, I think everybody was more toxic, toxic before 2003. Yeah, it's possible. That's the thing is, it came out in 2003, and I don't think that anyone, the 2003 audience, was watching this and going, "This is fucked up." I think it takes a uh, in a 2015, 20, I mean, maybe even as early as like 2012 audience, but certainly a 2020 audience is like, mm-hmm. yeah, dude, love actually is crazy. Like, like 2002, early 2003, me would have been totally like, right on, do the sign thing. That's that fucking awesome. Well, I mean, look, uh, we, uh, some shit just doesn't age well. I love Friends, but like, <laughs> yeah, holy shit, there's a lot of parts of Friends that are just like, oh my god, how far, what? How far did you get in Friends? Because last I heard you talk about it, you'd only gotten into like, I think you stopped at season two? Uh, oh my god, no, I've seen every episode of Friends multiple times. Oh, nice. 
That's, um, yeah, I've, I've only I've only stopped after season two, but I, I've had updates throughout the years. So not really been like, oh, really? What? Go ahead. Yeah. Friends, Friends is super funny, um, but there, yeah, there's really a lot of problems. Like a lot of problems. Like it hasn't aged. It hasn't aged well both like politically correctness <laughs> and also just like technology. Oh. Um, there's, you know, there, the whole, uh, Monica and Chandler getting together is all based on the fact like Rachel finds out because she picks up a landline yeah. at the same time that Monica's on a landline with Chandler. So if you don't know anything about landline phones, which most, I mean, your child and most, children or anybody under the age of when I had my first cell phone, maybe like 2000 and 2000, I don't know, 2000 ish, 2002, right around when I love actually came out and uh-huh. the cell phones started becoming more relevant. Yes. yes. Um, After the matrix, they, you there, there was a boom. You're not aware that like, if you have a landline in your house, no matter how many phones you have, if you pick up one, you can hear the conversation from another. another one, yeah. um, mm-hmm. And uh, fortunately, Love actually doesn't use a lot of technology, so it uh, transcends time. Other than the fact that uh, you can't, although I guess it takes place in London, so maybe I'm wrong, but uh, can you meet people at the gate? I don't know. I haven't flown since, um, well... Since before 9-11, probably. Oh, <gasps> for real? Yeah, I don't think I have. I can't think. I mean, I wasn't really much of a travel by airplane person anyway. Um, wow, that's crazy. Well, I'm, you know, from a small area in Northern California, we have a couple airports here, but, you know. It's fair. Right. Um, <laughs> we have a pretty decent-sized airport, uh, but not, a, you know, not like LAX or even San Francisco International or even et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. Airport talk. Airport talk. Uh, no, I mean, if you if you're flying anywhere after 9/11 in the United States, you cannot go past security. But there's a lot of a lot of things that are uh, prevalent to like meeting people at the gate in uh, this uh, in this movie, yeah. and uh, that also happens with friends. Oh. I don't know why I'm tying love actually to friends. Oh yeah, meeting it's just people like at the these gate. are. This is a list of the problematic things that I like. <laughs> it was like the episode when they come back from uh, in the f- season one of epi- uh, sorry season two episode one. Rachel's coming with a bouquet for Ross, uh, and he she sees yes, him get off the plane with China Julie with fucking Julie, and then she's like well, and stumbles and then like hits her head and then yep. she's bleeding. And Julie, like, Julie, Julie, tell him the story, and then he Ross who was with Julie, with Julie, yeah, and then the chicken he poked at her up. Uh, Me Rachel. and my therapist oh. refer to uh, friends as uh, basically heroin when it comes to like, because I like to watch sitcoms to like um, feel less depressed. And so I'll watch like New Girl or I'll watch Big Mouth or I'll watch things like that to get me in a good mood. Uh-huh. But when I need like, oh no. Oh, sorry, this is so um, okay. past my bedtime. Mm-hmm. When I need to watch. Um, the real good stuff. When I'm a, a real feeling real low, and I need I need that strong stuff. Mm-hmm. Insert friends. Insert friends. That's yes. Nice. I like Bob's Burgers. I've been watching that to fall asleep lately. Oh. Yeah. Um. I want to watch it in earnest because it is very funny. Um. But it's been providing me uh nice like kind of background music on nights when I kind of just can't sleep and uh, need some background noise. I was doing family guy for a while and then I was like, Oof, this show. Mm, I, so, yeah. So it's, I've seen many episodes of family guy and then I just kind of stopped watching episodes of family guy. Cause I was like, okay, all right. Yeah. I was like, I don't think I identify with Seth Farland's uh, sense of humor anymore. So I'm going to switch to something that I might like a little bit more. And Bob's Burgers great for that. It's really nice. Bob's Burgers. Yeah. I also like just crazy stuff too. Like, uh, there's a major laser. The, I made a version of that on, um, gosh, I don't know what it was on. Um, doesn't really know. It was on Hulu. I'm pretty sure. Mm-hmm. Uh, James Adomian did voices on it. Nick Rutherford yeah. writes for it. Yeah, yeah. But I like so, the music, so. Hmm. 
I was talking to my roommate uh, two days ago because she didn't ever he- she'd never heard of too many cooks. Oh, Have yeah. you heard of too many cooks? Oh hell yeah. 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 So she, w- I showed her too many cooks, and she's like, okay. Like, that's insane. And I was like, oh, but did you watch it? Um, <laughs> <laughs> but um, she never really understood or heard of, like, what Adult Swim was. And I was like, what do you mean? Like, Adult Swim is like, like, I always identified Adult Swim as like that thing, like when you would fall asleep at as a kid with Cartoon Network on. And then you'd wake up in the middle of the night and Space Ghost would be on and it would be kind of scary. Like Adult Swim occupies the space where comedy and and horror mm. lit. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And like things are like they're funny until they're kind of like kind of make you really uncomfortable and uneasy and mm. Uh, and scared for some reason, and I and I fucking love that about Adult Swim. Scared. And uh, that's what yeah. the books is. It uh, kind of does that. It's it's funny, and then it's like not funny, and then it's funny again, and then it's scary, and then it's, mm-hmm. um, Aqua Teen Hunger Force, C Lab Twenty Twenty One. Yes, I mean just yes, great stuff, and you know, and you know, very funny. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to figure out like. When Love Actually is uh, inevitably remade slash rebooted slash whatever they do now in, I'll say, five to eight more years, Mm -hmm. who now do you think would be able to play some of these characters, assuming they're going to keep most of the characters and then try to update them in some way? Who would you cast in some of these, these parts? Uh, okay. Well, you've got your your source Ronins in Emma Thompson's parts, and you've got um, Eddie Redmayne as Alec Rickman, Alan Rickman, right? Interesting. I'm going big actors because it's all and everyone's British, of course. Well, now is this um, who you think they're going to do? Or is this who you want in the role, or a little bit of both? Like who you'd be like, oh well, they're going to do this, but they should do this. I mean, is it a little bit of both, or is it? Uh... No, I'm I'm just like who I want. I mean, I, okay. who's going to do it? I have no fucking idea. Well, no, but I mean, uh, yeah. Chris O'Dowd will be in it, probably as like Chris O'Dowd. Was he, was he in um, Bridesmaids? T crowd and Bridesmaids, yes. Okay. Um, yeah. he'll probably be like. Hmm. I, I don't know, background in it. Um, what if he was like Billy Mac in, in it? Like, who would be Billy Mac if they were going to recast it? Also, would they keep any of the originals to make, like, cameos like they did with I the I feel like the, the, the Billy Mac character, they should keep the original. Um, or if they're making cameos, like, Laura Linney should make a cameo. Um, mm-hmm. For sure. We love her. Um, oh, yeah. Rowan Atkinson will make a cameo and maybe they'll get his whole Christmas angel bit that you say is like a thing. Um, That'd be interesting. Think Zac Efron's going to wind up in it? Why not? What do you, well, I like Zac Efron. So what I've seen him in, I like, and I haven't seen him much, but I, and I do need to see high school musical because I do like musicals, but I, I, I kind of stayed away from Disney for a long time. Sorry. What? They said, do you like musicals? <laughs> No, do you need to see High School Musical? Um, more out of curiosity after having seen it uh, represented on Encore on Disney+. Plus. Oh my god, such a good show. I'll be right back. Okay, Encore. Encore, yes, on Disney+. Plus. So they did High School Musical, which is something I'd really not... <sighs> I'd not really experienced because I kind of like... I think I was the wrong age for it when it came out. So was I, but I think I was in high school when it came out, and yet somehow... what? Did, when did that come out? Hold on, high school? I think like 2000, I'm going to say. That's my guess. No way. Maybe not. No way. But I mean, it's like there's... It's there's like it's kind of like everybody has their season of season or time period of Saturday Night Live that they like because that's the season that they. Two thousand six. That came out say. when I was in high school, and I was in high school show choir, and yet I was still was like I'm too old for this. That's interesting. Yeah, yeah I was six, and I was like, no, no, sorry, I'm not going to watch something on the Disney Channel. I think it's not for me. I think I think um, Newsies probably came out when I was in high school. 
and subsequently I never saw it because it was a newer musical and I was like I mean, you know there's some old musicals I still need to see you know mm-hmm. some I have seen since then but like I mean I don't know still like Singing in the Rain or Music Man he's not you know Singing in the Rain is awesome yeah it doesn't get much better than Singing in the Rain Singing in the Rain also so you want Zac Efron in, La Fe- in the new Love Actually uh, it's not so much that I want him it's just I could see him in there somewhere I'm just trying to figure out where it would be like who would be the young guy who who goes to you know America, or would that be a thing now? Like, would he, you know, because there might be a twist on it to work, or he could cut that. You know, they don't really need that storyline. They'd really... probably kill that one, to be honest. Now, in the Magnolia ending, where everybody's shown to be related in some way to each other, where is his thing in this? Like, who's he? Who's he related to? In the, in the... he's friends with the guy who is like a director's assistant on the movie that Martin Freeman is working on. Okay. So he's not, and he yeah. delivers coffee to the office that Alan Rickman works in, and he also caters the wedding of Keira Knightley. So he's kind of, like, he works a lot of odd jobs, and he's friends with, you know. That makes sense. That guy. Okay. <laughs> I do also really like the Hugh Grant story with Natalie and whatnot. I did find that to be really charming. And, uh, well, I mean, it's, you know, he, he, he sees her being mistreated. And then, like, but the thing is, it's like, this, this guy is the leader of the free world on this side, on his side of the pond. And he's creating an international, uh, a possible international incident by taking this position because of the, because he's being chivalrous. And it's, it's it's romantic. <laughs> you can't get away from it. It's great. You can't get away from the fact that it is a romantic thing. It's a it's a, it's an extraordinarily irresponsible thing, but it's a great story. Yeah. I just and also like I'm really like plus it's not the real world. It's hard for me to dislike Hugh Grant in most things. I need to watch The Undoing, but like I just I love him in most things. Yeah, I enjoy his, uh, most everything I've seen him in. I I think I'd only ever seen of the Richard Curtis movies. Uh, I've seen Notting Hill once, and I really like that. You know? Yeah, I tried watching the second time, and I just didn't have time. I just got sidetracked. So yeah, I've seen it like once when I was like younger, and like I just haven't rewatched it. I kind of just like wanted to live in my head. It's like a nice thing because I've heard since like, oh, rewatch it when you're older. You're gonna really dislike Julia Roberts' character. I was like, eh. yeah. I just like the the scene where he's talking about the honeyed um, apricots or something. Is this that, mm-hmm. that that kind of scene that only Hugh Grant can do, where it's that kind of like awkward talking and talking and talking himself into it. He's a, so good. Yeah, it's yeah. Did you ever see like one of his earliest uh, like uh, Lair of the Lair of the White Worm? It's a Ken, mm-hmm. Ken Russell horror film. Marty's seen it. He knows that what I'm talking about. That movie is bonkers. So if you like things like <laughs> How Did This Get Made, the podcast, which I imagine you've heard a few times, mm-hmm. uh, it is something that if they have not done it, they should because it is a it is a. I, I was going to say great movie. It's it's an it's appropriate for their format. Let's put it that way. It's not a bad movie. Got it. You know, it's it is weird, um, but it is. Ken I mean, the question is, how did this get made? Not uh, yes. This is a bad movie. You know, and it's not. It doesn't even qualify as subpar art. It is. Te- it is good art, and it's ju- it's just. Um, well, it's like you know. I imagine. I imagine Mandy is a movie that I would like because it's. I haven't seen it, but it sounds kind of like a like. Um, sounds like Ken Russell movie with like chainsaws, so, yeah. or with chainsaw intensity, I should say. So that's that sounds that intrigues me because I like a, a good amount of healthy uh, graphic violence occasionally. Um, sure. That's why I play video games. Um, <laughs> so, Cassandra, uh, you have a. You have, I, wa- I was kind of wanting at some point, I did want to, but there's no, there's not really a lot of time for that now. I apologize. I was mm-hmm. going to ask about a couple of the podcasts that uh, have only done like, oh, like one or two episodes uh, that I was interested in. Uh, one of them was, um, did this mess up, mess us up, I believe is what it was called. Oh yeah. No, the, the, this mess us up. Yeah. Um, with, uh, my friend Grayson Niles, we, um, we had a podcast for a second and then it went away 
uh, for scheduling reasons and then COVID reasons. Hmm. Um, I had another podcast, uh, and God created podcast, Mm -hmm. which I love that one. However, um, due to breakups and other things, (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> we don't uh, we don't do that one anymore. But ah. one of the people on that podcast, Erica Curry, mm-hmm. her and I do have a podcast which is happening in full speed. Um, trashy, trashy. Yes, indeed. So you, uh, you know talked about love actually in the most recent episode. Did I? From yes, of time. course I did. Yes, because I went because I went uh, to the drive-in with my boyfriend. Yep. Cool. Yeah, I talk about love actually so frequently that I'm like. I am just like, yeah, I I talked about it. Or did I? Yes, I probably did. Well, your enthusiasm for the film definitely uh, was something that stayed in my mind over the last years. And it's not one, (laughs) it's not a movie I actively avoided. It's just I needed the opportunity. And so you would mention it, and I would look on the streaming services and be like, not available. I'll focus on something else this week. Mm -hmm. And this just happened over and over again, as as that does tend to do. But then eventually when Kruger finally said, Hey, you know what? I'll watch Thugs of Hindustan. If you watch Love Actually, I was like, sold American. I could do that. Where do I find? Oh, it's not on streaming. And you're like, buy it. I'm like, okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so I rented it and I will eventually probably buy it on DVD because there's a four pack that comes with Notting Hill and two other romantic comedies that I've never seen for like 12. Which nine, ones? Like do you know? On DVD. Oh gosh. Oh, oh, oh. It's like one with Diane Keaton. And then, uh, I can't remember what the other one is. It was on my Amazon page that I was looking for. It's complicated? Could be. It was, it was a, it was wow. a four-pack, yeah, with those. And I was like, well, you know, because for the price, it's like twelve ninety nine. I would pay for a movie. I'm going to need to be tweeted that link, although I don't even have a DVD player. But, like, part of me is just like, fuck it, just own it anyways. And digital copies. Well, you know, but yeah, DVD players are hard to find. So, thank you for... Consistently mentioning the film to keep it in my, you know, sphere of awareness lineup for me to actually finally sure. see it because I did enjoy it, and I do, would recommend it to people. And eventually, I would actually like my wife to see it, and I'm pretty sure because it'll be a second full viewing that stuff that didn't make me cry the first time around probably will make me cry the second time around. You're gonna catch new things. I catch new things every time I've watched it. And I've watched it like 15 times. Yeah. <laughs> just only watch it around Christmas time because then you get to have like the experience of like enjoying it for the first time mm-hmm. every year. I did find a uh, podcast that uh, you might like, and I almost forgot to mention it. It is uh, a podcast that talks about Love Actually, and I was going to clip it for for Succotash, uh, a clip show mm. of Succotash, rather. It's called Christmas Actually. Christmas Actually with Luke Allen and Lara Collier. I'm upset. Upset or obsessed? What? what happened? Upset. So this is their podcast? Uh, it is Christmas Actually? It's called Christmas Actually, yeah. Uh, and it's basically kind of like a moment-by-moment sort of... Uh, uh, it's like one, of, not quite a minute by minute podcast, like Darren Husted's podcasts, where he does a minute by minute breakdown of movies mm-hmm. or of music. Um, but um, he uh, with Carrie Collin, you said Carrie was uh, who's her name? Lock- I found Christmas actually. Oh wait, here's here's the here's the um, uh, the art. Oh no, you can't see that. There, you can kind of see the oh, if I move it there. Oh, I got it. Yeah. Okay. It was Luke Allen and Lara Collier. So they, uh, I only listened to the first episode, which is called The Pilot, actually, because I was going to clip it. And, um, yeah, I mean, it's fine. I, 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 uh, That's cute. You know, it's like a, like a couple of people that get together, they're all time friends, and they just sort of break down the... And by the way, more people can have can do this kind of thing or find another way to do a Love Actually podcast. I actually wanted to do one called Thugs, actually, that somehow combined Love Actually with oh Thugs of Hindustan. <laughs> Count me out. <laughs> <laughs> so just, oh, I can't see my hand, but I need a little check mark. Okay. Um, so, um, so anyway, thank you for uh, doing this episode here. Uh, I brought of course. Trashy, trashy. And of course, you're on Nooner and have been there. I'm on Nooner every Tuesday night on the Smodcast Network at 7.30 p.m. Pacific. Mm-hmm. 
uh, Standard Time. We are uh, live, and then we're also potted. Um, and then, yeah, Trashy Trashy, you can find it wherever you get podcasts. We just got on Pandora. Um, but we're also on Stitcher, Spotify, and Apple Podcasts. You're on, are you on Anchor FM? Yes, we are. We're on Anchor. Yes, we're on Anchor. We do ads for Anchor, I think. Um, and then, uh, yeah, and then Nooners everywhere. But uh, this week we're doing a special episode for uh, Recipe for Seduction, which is the Mario Lopez uh, Lifetime movie in a collaboration with KFC. It's 15 minutes long and 15 minutes of pure trash. Have you seen it yet? Oh, yes, I have. Oh, good. I, 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 and I'm going to rewatch it before I record with Erica, but holy <laughs> fucking hell. I'm just, I, I literally think I watched it like in like Macaulay Culkin Home Alone face like the whole time, just like shocked. Like, I, I, the whole time I was thinking about the budget, like who the fuck, like you want to talk about how did this get made? Like, mm-hmm. what the fuck is this? It's, it's awesome. So check out, um, that pod. I think it'll be really fun. Oh, good. And um, so you recommend that Colonel Sanders thing? <laughs> it's free to watch on Lifetime app. So, yeah, I mean, fuck it. Why not? It's only 15 minutes and you're going to watch it and you're going to go, oh, wow, this is very 2020. Like I had, I think that like, you know, when people like watch things that they don't want to watch and they're like, wow, I, I, you know, I wish I could have that hour and a half back. Mm-hmm. It's 2020. So like, I don't think you're ever going to think, well, I wish I had that 15 minutes back. You're just going to be like, Wow, that um, that that's real. It sounds, that happens. Sounds that's fascinating. It, it, when you guys were talking it's, about it, I it, it's definitely one that I was kind of wanting to. I'm glad that that I got the follow up to know uh, that you did like it. Actually, now I think about it, um, people will will know that you liked it on your show before they hear about it on this show. Oh my goodness! Okay, well go go listen to it. Go see what we said. Yes, do that, people. Um, Pod Bay is another way place you can find it. But go go to Anchor FM, Anchor Bay, Anchor what's it? Mm, Anchor FM. Anchor FM. I think. So thank you, thank you, Cassandra, for being. Of course. Show about love, actually, thank you for staying up late with me. And uh, after a show, you did a double header tonight. Yes, I am exhausted. Uh, I'm a little loopy and. I'm going to eat something and probably fall asleep mid-bite after this. Sounds good. Cheers. <laughs> and uh, happy holidays. Thank you. Happy holidays, Tyson. Thank you, Cassandra. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a little tired, too. So. so there it is, the final Succotash shut-in of 2020. What a year this has been, and still continues to be. I would say something like, I can't wait for 2020 to be over, but as I ponder my own mortality, as well as that of those around me that I love, care for, and respect, I reflect on the finite nature of pretty much everything, and choose to experience every day and make each one last as long as it can. The fear of death can make people desperate in particularly nasty ways. Some people claim that they aren't afraid of dying, and use that as an excuse to be careless and or reckless with the lives of the people around them which I would like to go on record as generally wanting to discourage that sort of thing. After all, encouraging the spread of a deadly disease is tantamount to domestic biological terrorism. Imagine if it were treated as such. Now, shake it off, and imagine peace on Earth and goodwill towards all humankind. Imagine that love is all around, because it actually is. Actually, if all goes well... I'll talk to you in 2021, on January 23rd, I believe, four days before my son's second birthday. Thank you for listening. Thank you to Mark Hershon, Joe Paulino, Bill Haywatt, Scott Carvey, and Kenny Durgis for making the show a thing, and for including me in it. Thank you to all my friends and family who might hear this one day. I'll leave you with this excerpt from the first moments of the audio theater satire known as Buzzsaw 3, What Now, Hollywood Sunrise, written by Cassandra Cardenas, and this particular clip features performances by Cassandra Cardenas and John Sylvain. Whenever I get gloomy with the state of the world, I think about the arrivals gate at the Los Angeles airport. General opinion is starting to make out that we live in a world of hatred and greed, but I don't see that. It seems to me that love is everywhere. 
Often it's not particularly dignified or newsworthy, but it's always there. Fathers and sons, mothers and daughters, husbands and wives, boyfriends, girlfriends, old friends. When the planes hit the Twin Towers, as far as I know, none of the phone calls from the people on board were messages of hate or revenge. They were all messages of love. If you look for it, I've got a sneaky feeling you'll find that love actually is all around. Ha! Are you fucking serious? You took three weeks just to copy and paste the opening monologue from Love Actually? Stop trying to make this happen. We, we, we barely planned this out. There, there's no way we can intersect seven different love stories. I didn't copy and paste it exactly. I said Los Angeles Airport. And I know we'll never compete with that kind of genius, but we can do something different, can't we? I guess. I mean, think about it. Christmas is everywhere, even at Sawmill Lake. It's Buzzsaw 3! What now? Hollywood Sunrise. By the way, please pass the succotash. You've been listening to Suckatash Chats, the comedy soundcast soundcast with your host, Tyson Saner. Brought to you by Henderson's Pants and... Imagine your company's name right here. Find us on the web at SuckatashShow.com, on iTunes, on Stitcher Smart Radio, on SoundCloud, on YouTube, on Donder, on Blitzen, on iHot Radio, and on... <laughs> the laughable app. You can hear us streaming and like us on Facebook. Follow us on Twitter at Suckatash Show. Email us at Tyson Saner at SuckatashShow.com. Or call into the Suckatash hotline at our toll call number, 818-921-7212. That number again is 818-921-7212. You can also upload clips from your favorite comedy soundcasts directly to us by using our direct upload link at Hightail.com slash you slash Suckatash. Production of Suckatash is overseen by Joe Paulino through the auspices of Studio P. Sausalito, hosted by Tyson Saner. Our executive producer is Mark Hershon. Our musical director is Scott Carvey. Our booth assistant is Kenny Durges. Until next time, I'm your loyal booth announcer, Bill Haywatt, reminding you to please pass the Suckatash. Goodbye. This has been a Succotash Patch production. <laughs> <laughs>